while I can't speak to that specific circumstance, um, but our protocol would be to take the information down, it would be forwarded to the detective bureau, and it would be followed up upon. I would appreciate if someone takes, uh, you know, at least Absolutely. track of that. I appreciate that. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity to speak here. Um, I have three, three concerns. One is um, one of my name, one of my friend was robbed, and when he called the cops and they came and said, "What's the value of?" It? And he said, "The value is like less than thousand dollars or something." So I want to know, and, and the cop replied this, saying that it's not worth pursuing this kind of cases because we need more value to be that. So that's kind of funny for me. Um, so if the robber comes in, he's not giving thousand dollars, he's giving two thousand dollars, so we can go to the police. <laughs> so that's one thing. And the other thing is, in media, there are some containers stacked on the side, which is kind of not right. It's it's kind of scary. We cannot take our kids around, and it's broken. There's big holes in it. Uh, what is the township? taking action on these kind of dump uh, containers. And the third is, there is a volunteer uh, fire station uh, in, in my Avenue. I heard like last uh, mayor's, uh, it was, she was saying that there will be a substation open there, police substation over there, because it takes a lot of time for police to come start from here to all the way. Um, so now it isn't so big, why don't we have kind of kind of substations? So these are my three concerns. Okay, so I don't believe you're the only the only uh, person in the room tonight that's uh, got a question about the substation, correct? Absolutely. Yes. All right, so I'll address that. Um, first of all, there's six districts, as I just stated, in Edison Township. And we have multiple officers in each district at any given time to patrol that district. Um, the substation would give you, the residents, the citizens, a false sense of security. Um, because you don't need to go to the substation to call us. Simply call us from your home or your cell phone, and we're in that district, and we respond. Um, for high incidence crimes, our average response time is four minutes. That's number one. Number two is in this particular situation that happened in Edison Township, we had an officer on location within two minutes. No substation. Are you going to the side because... One question for kids. No, I'm sorry, you, you did have your hand up here, sir. For kids, uh, now all kids are very scared to stay in a home. Do you have any, any plan or any program for the kids? You go to the house or some places and you uh, ask the kids, they not worry, now you are with them. Do you have any this kind of plan for kids? Like all kids are very scared. They don't want to stay in a home alone, even women. They well, don't want to stay in a home. That's a good point, but that's up to the parent to educate the children. So, so we should be educating the children and telling them that, that they clearly are very safe. This is one incident that happened in Edison Township recently. But again, it's not specific to Edison Township. It's the school. Like if you go to the school, some police officer go and they talk to the Indian kids over there. And they some like they're happy with that. Well, you know, we did have the D.A.R.E. program, but that was cut out with the last administration. Um, that is a good point. We probably would, would as long as we have the resources, we'll be looking to institute that once again. And that, that may be very helpful. But that's also something you want to talk to the educators about in the school for the children, too. I have a, um, I have a very quick question. Um, here. So two months back, someone uh, entered to our house, and he, um, he went from front to upstairs. And upstairs, uh, I have two daughters, eight and four, they were in the room and I was doing grass mowing outside. So lesson learned from me was do not keep the door open. But as soon as I entered inside, I saw that person inside the bedroom and I called 911, right? Till today, no cop showed up. <laughs> I'm, ready. I'm ready to give all the references, my address, when I call, and my conversation. So I stayed two days in the shop, what happened. I'm new to Edison Township for the last one year, we are here. I stayed two days in the shop, and after two days, I called back again, uh, station. Uh, see, this is what happened. I had called 911, no cops came up. What happened? I just wanted to curious what happened. The answer I got was, we got that guy, 
he was mentally unstable guy. Uh, uh, he, uh, and we, uh, we were able to capture him. But I got the, the work was done, but how kind of sense of security for me if something like this happened? Should I call 911 or something? Well, you should, you should call 911 and, and again, um, I don't know this incident, but what I would ask you to do is give your name and your phone number to Lieutenant Mark Antuno to investigate it because when you call 911, we respond. I mean, we're there. So even when people call up and say, um, we're really sorry, but my three-year-old dialed 911 by accident, everything's okay, we're still going there. So I would ask that you give him, so we can look into that. I think there may yeah. be more to it. I, I don't necessarily believe that that's completely accurate. But I thank you. I, I, I had a long conversation with 911. I was with them. They were, they were with me until that person didn't walk out. After, so the, the 911 was with me in the car with, for at least 15 minutes. And I was talking to the person because I didn't know. So you were talking to one of the telecommunicators? Who are, who are is that? Yeah. Okay, so again, I'd be more than happy to look into that, and then I'll, I'll contact you myself, but if you would please give me information to Lieutenant Mark Routuno before you leave tonight, I'd appreciate that. Thanks. I second this guy. Actually, I had three months back, uh, somebody walking from my backyard from the kitchen from the sliding glass door. I was there in the family room, and my son was in the kitchen. Somehow he saw this guy, okay? and immediately we called the car, all right? It took them 20 minutes to come down over there. And you can check the record also, okay? So the, it looks like that, <coughs> that it's maybe you're short of the police officer. And I know mayor says that they're going to give 15 more, you know, car officer like that. But I think so, the main, our suggestion is that we, I'm coming from Winding Brook aspect, okay, 920 of course, my Swali. All right, on behalf of Winding Brook, I'm just giving you some suggestions. If you can help us out, okay, that basically we need a police patrol car. We, we don't want 140,000 dollars for the police car. But at least we need somebody who can patrol on a regular one hour or two hour basis, maybe with 20, 30, 40 dollars an hour. Or we can chip in as a community, okay, for those people during the daytime and everything. I think that is one of the suggestions. The second suggestion is that you know we need entry and exit from our, let's say we have three-way entry. You know, right. We need to put a camera over there where we need a BSENG pole so they can give us the power and we can chip in for the camera. So we can see if there is robbery happens, we can roll it back and see if there is any car or somebody getting or not. So at least for future point of view, you know, we can, we can help it out. And third thing is that we need a speed breaker. So sometimes if the tips comes, you know, they run fast and maybe, you know, they slow down the things like that. So I think so the main thing is that we need more police patrol. So at least the people, if they will know, okay, that there is some, uh, you know, uh, things going on from the, from the township or police township like that. So then that is the key thing. We had three years back, you did the same presentation. You know, most of the people are educated. They know what are the normal things to be taken care of. But I think so, these are well, the well, This is true, but yeah. not, this is true, but we just had an incident the other day, in fact, where we had a couple of car burglaries, and, and uh, you know, the victim said that I didn't lock my car. So it's yeah. just a reminder. I think it's yeah. important. No, I mean, it's the common main, sense, but it's the a main thing is the response time. And how can you respond it when you don't have many police Ah, good point. Good point. Good point. Good point. But like so that's said. what our suggestion is there. Uh, and, and I know there are many other, as somebody says, about technological way. So that's the one of the things also we discussed. That if we have a camera and that has been centralized control, okay, then if somebody wrongly happens, we said, okay, we'll use the panic pattern, the next door neighbor will know. That's how we have educated right. within our community. Uh, but if you have that centralized monitoring things, whether it is within the community or at the police station, okay? So well, then we can immediately trigger that thing and you can take the action. Point, point, so I think so. Point, what I'm trying to say we need a help. You, you we are point. ready to chip in some money, whatever we can afford it. But well, at least, you know, you should be looking to those. There's, there's many other people here that would like to speak to, sir. But just to address you briefly, uh, it's very important. Cameras are very important. If you've got 
If you've got your own camera system, they have been able to aid us in capturing perpetrators in the past, and that's important. Um, but centrally locating cameras, again, that's a budgeting issue. It costs a lot of money to do that. This is something we're moving forward to in the future, but again, it costs a lot of money. I think the main thing right now is, uh, again, I thank the mayor and the council because um, but several years ago, we had 215 officers. Okay, uh, we, we are diminished somewhat, and we certainly need new officers to be hired, we're in the process of doing it right now. So more officers out there patrolling your district is the answer right now. Um, as far as the response time goes, I just gave you a, a hard statistic, which is for a major crime, within four minutes we're there. However, um, some of the jobs are prioritized, so if it's not a high priority job, then of course it's gonna take a little bit longer to get there. Okay. How, how but, do you know sir, with all due respect, there's a lot of so people here tonight that like but I, I appreciate so it. Thank you very much. Like uh, so uh, Mayor, I want to applaud you for your effort to bring everyone together. I really appreciate it. Um, but, Chief, there's, the, I think the reason why we're here today, actually, the, I know the reason why we're here today is one, because we're, we're very scared and frustrated, but more so because we're tired of the same thing happening year over year over year. And I think. I came here, when I saw this presentation, the reality is that this same presentation exactly was presented the last time that we were all at the firehouse. Here we all remember. I think the type of effort that we want to see is what Mayor Lanky said, uh, that we, you know, we want to hire more officers. We want to feel like we're safe. We want to feel like we're in a community where we're safe, and we want to see that the, the officers in all the six districts that you have you know, just this past Saturday, there were only six officers. I understand that they were called out. The minimum requirement that we have in the township right now is six officers on the patrol force. That's that's a minimum. I don't understand how that's acceptable. That's not, that's inaccurate. I'll, I'll be more than happy to explain it. I think it's it's eight, but if two call out or whatever it is, but the, the reality is that there's six. To make the statement that there's six officers patrolling Edison 24/7 um, is inaccurate. No, we have what's called minimum manpower staffing levels. We have three different shifts, and there are overlaps, and uh, there are times that certain, with a certain small window, um, we have a certain amount of officers on the road, but uh, certainly to say that it is, is not accurate. Okay. My point is simply that on Saturday, there was a point where only six officers were on the road. And in the last seven weeks, there's been 40 burglars. The point is that we know that around the time of the volley and around the time of the holiday season, crime tends to split. Can we have more officers patrolling the roads? We'll do our part. I think that we, we understand the presentation. It's very good information. We'll do our part. But at the same time, we like to feel like we're safe, knowing that around these time periods, there is more of a police presence. And also for the police officers, I, I think it's, it's only fair to them. I don't think it's fair that they, they have, you know, they're, they're shorthanded as well. So well, that's that's why we're. I just we just stated at Lone the Mayor we're we're remedying that problem. But uh, this administration just took over, um, so I can only give you the statistics. And again, several years ago we had 215 officers, and it has slowly diminished, and a lot of officers weren't weren't replaced. Now we're moving forward, and I'm grateful for that. I'm in your desk jobs and I completely understand. But you also have to understand also, it's important that. If you see a patrol officer in a marked unit, they're not the only officers that are out there on the road. We have what's called the Special Operations Group, the SOC unit. We have unmarked cars out there, and we have ununiformed officers out there protecting you also. That's true, but on the weekends, detectives aren't even out on the roads. They're on call, but none were even called on duty this past weekend, even though there were certain crimes that they should have been called into. Wow. We never have detectives. Well, again, I, I don't know where you're getting your information from, Sam, but that's not completely accurate. But I thank you. Uh, Mr. Macon. Uh, I've had people in the uh, Indian community here in town tell me that that uh, they're being targeted because they have high carat gold in their homes. And I'm wondering if maybe one of the safety tips would be to get the gold out of their homes well, that's a very good point, and as I stated earlier, valuables to, to gold and other valuables should certainly be in a safe deposit box, or, or, or it's certainly in the safe. That's a very good point. Yes, sir. 
even if you put it in the same deposit box, I like, suppose the community members would agree that uh, our females, uh, two, three days before the Diwali, they go to the same deposit box and they bring it because they want to wear it on those particular days. So I don't think so. The point of, uh, I mean, that safe deposit box is solved the problem. Well, unfortunately, what Mr. Bacon said is true. Um, if there is a practice that people are used to doing over and over, and other people discover that and want to take advantage of you, then again, that's an opportunity. So we have to be smart. Yeah. Also, I have a suggestion regarding the future years. Sure. I'm actually noticing the profile of the people here. Uh, there's only one kid out here. Uh, actually, it would be great if the kids and the children actually come to know that what we are really thinking about and what measures we are taking. So uh, the point is that uh, uh, most of the community members, they go to the temples on these days. So maybe the contact point of doing these kind of really making the people feel in the community that the police and everybody you know, are really thinking about it. So I don't well, know that's a great point. Again, we'd be more than happy to come out to you. Again, if you could leave your name on the sign-up sheet, um, we can, I would forward that to Sergeant Judas, and we'd be more than happy to come out to you and be able to do that. Um, Mr. Katari had his hand up here for a while. <laughs> First, I want to thank uh, Mayor and Council and uh, Police Chief for uh, is causing a hurry in this meeting, even though it's not enough time, but the number of people is telling you how to do it. Yeah. You all are scared, you need the answers. I'm very happy that some police officers you are hiring, it will definitely help, but we need a, at least some of the minority people in our police force. And I don't know exact number what we have, but the 30 percent of a South Asian community deserve some of the more police officers from South Asian community. That is one opinion. Coming to second, as uh, anybody is harmed in this case is our community, but we all are concerned about it. It's not about a particular community, and people are not able to sleep and I know how many calls I got and how many emails go out in WhatsApp. So I being involved in a community know it is a scary situation and when a particular community is targeted, it's more scary. Because it is very traumatizing and it's my sincere wish that it never happens Chief, again. You're doing a like great job and yeah. whatever the resources you have, yeah. you're doing it. Mayor is trying to balance the taxes and everything. All those are important. But the safety of the residents in their house is the most important part. And that's not there. 